you learned a lot about nutrition as a veterinarian when you f first started. How did that translate into what you're doing now and, and what you learned back then? Well, <clears throat> everything we learn about human nutrition is first studied in animal nutrition. And again, um, we learned how to prevent and cure as many as 900 different diseases in animals simple with nutritional uh, supplementation rather than stem cells and genetically engineered proteins and organ transplants and wonder drugs. Mm -hmm. We have triple lifespans. We have triple lifespans. An old dog 60 years ago was eight years old. Today, an old dog is 25. And we did that simply by putting vitamins and minerals in either their canned dog food or their dry dog food. And as a kid, it seemed odd to me that we did that for animals and nobody was doing it for people. And so it was very, very um, uh, heavily imprinted upon me that you can only be in business financially in the livestock industry, because that's how I grew up uh, on a purebred Angus farm, was that um, you had to have, when you're, you're feeding 100 cows, you had to have 100 perfect pregnancies without uh, some kind of problem where the cow had to be in bed for three months, the last you know, months <laughs> of pregnancy. Uh, you, you had to have calves that were healthy enough to stand and nurse out in the pasture in the middle of the night when they were born without attendance. And <clears throat> you had to have enough health in those calves so that they reached market weight or reproductive age without the need for veterinary care. We were able to pull that off just simply by adding vitamins and minerals. And uh, as a result, uh, when I looked at the people living on farms and all their early deaths, what they were dying from, I said, well, we got rid of that in animals. Uh, why aren't we doing that for people? And people said, uh, medical doctors and uh, teachers and professors would say, well, you get everything you need in your four food groups. Well, of course, uh, that's nonsense. And, and um, along about 1978, I actually discovered the cause, prevention, and cure for cystic fibrosis. And at first, um, every expert in the field of cystic fibrosis, which is a childhood disease thought to be incorrectly, but thought to be a genetically transmitted disease, it turns out that it's a congenital deficiency of the trace mineral selenium. And I proved this, got experts to agree on my cases of cystic fibrosis in primates. I was working at the Yerkes Regional Primate Research Center in Atlanta, Georgia for Emory University and NASA at the time. And I'd been in the, the orthodox medical field for many, many years. And the book that I had written on some of my projects, one of these big 1,200-page reference books, is in the Smithsonian Institute as a national treasure, right? And they fired me because they said, well, you've got to be sniffing glue because everybody knows this is a genetically transmitted disease, and you're going off on a tangent. So they fired me. And they didn't leave it go at that. I went and I actually got another job at St. Louis University as the director of their laboratory animal facilities, and NIH chased me and said, we'll defund you guys if you hire him. So they fired me again. I, I wasn't even unpacked, right? So I knew this was going to be a disaster. And um, so what, what turned this around nicely was uh, two years ago, the National Science Foundation in their, their official journal came out and said one of the most um, useful findings, un, unexpected findings from basic research where it was just serendipitous finding was the discovery of uh, cystic fibrosis in a monkey by a young pathologist. Well, they said with a little bracket that Emory University um, refused to release the name of the young pathologist, me, because they'd fired me, right? <clears throat> so we're in the process of getting the record uh, corrected and so forth. And we've taken this now to um, muscular dystrophy. We now know the cause, prevention, and cure of muscular dystrophy. We've known it for 60 years in the livestock industry, and of course, the medical system, well, they dismiss that, well, that's an animal, it's not true in mm -hmm. people. Well, I spent two weeks in a county in which um, a significant number of kids are born with muscular dystrophy, and we're able to reverse it quite simply with supplementation, and uh, it's certainly preventable because Purdue University has already done the groundwork in the animals in the area, mm -hmm. and because these minerals are missing in the soil, they couldn't raise livestock. So Purdue University found out 50 years ago, if you add these minerals to their feed, no muscular dystrophy. But the people living on the land there got muscular mm -hmm. dystrophy because they didn't supplement. It's just beautiful.